God is great and He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. I want to appreciate uh, all of you this morning and uh, I want to appreciate all our visitors as well. Um, the people who are not usually in fellowship with us, we just want to appreciate you. Um, appreciate Pastor Kulu, uh, good to see you. Uh, and appreciate Bob and Dambo as well. Uh, my father-in-law, uh, we are so grateful to be in fellowship with you. Amen. Um, I want us to talk today about uh, faith for unfamiliar undertakings. Um, there is faith that is common, you know, there, 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 there is common faith and, and the faith is the same but many times we apply faith for common things. Faith is the same, faith grows um, and uh, faith is progressive. Our, our state of believing can be improved upon. That is why disciples cry to Jesus, won't you increase our faith? Because faith does grow. And my prayer for all of us is that we may grow in faith. Hallelujah. But you realize that many times when we talk about faith, we talk about common undertakings. Uh, healing, for example. Trusting God for healing. That's a common faith exercise. Because people get sick very often. And then uh, trusting God for provision. Trusting God for daily bread. That's common faith exercise. Trusting God for victory in your exams. As some of us are busy with exams right now. That's common faith exercise. Trusting God for uh, uh, relationship issues. Uh, I want to appreciate Mamunza Matote. Good to see you. Hallelujah. Trusting God for, for, for common, common uh, uh, relationship, marriage issues. But every now and then, how many of you know that there comes a time when God calls upon you, Peter, to walk on the water? And that is uncommon faith exercise. In other words, out of 7 billion people, very few people will actually venture out to walk on the water when Jesus says, come. Not many are in that category. So that's why, really, you can fault Peter on many issues. But one thing you can't fault Peter on, he was prepared to trust God for the uncommon. Hallelujah. And I want to invite you this morning that we come into this space where we don't just pray for daily bread, but we trust God to do the uncommon. And I want you to also notice that uncommon undertakings often come with uncommon instructions. Hallelujah. So now, we need to mature as sons of God to a place where we are ready to embrace uncommon instructions. Mary, you will conceive. Immaculately so. How can I conceive without a man? It shall be done. And then the spirit of maturity will rise up in you, dear Mary, and say, let it be unto me as unto your word. Hallelujah. Uncommon. Uncommon faith exercise. And I do believe that when God is wanting to save a generation, it will not be mundane faith exercise. If our generation is going down the drain, we need men and women to step up and say, Father, count on me. I am ready for uncommon faith exercise. And I want us to explore these things uh, 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 this morning. I'm just going to look at a few examples, beloved. Noah. So we're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, heroes of faith. And the first one I want to look at is Noah. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. It says, by faith Noah. When warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear built an ark to save his family. By his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this was an uncommon undertaking. In the sense that there had never been any floods. But we are instructed, build an ark. 
And people that are looking at you are thinking to themselves, where is it going to float? Because in this time, beloved, there was no extreme weather patterns, you know. There, there, there was nothing like a, a, a hurricanes. There were no storms at this time. Mm -hmm. At this time, the weather was very calm, you know. The climate was very calm. Mm -hmm. And I want us to understand, it therefore takes faith that is ready to embrace the uncommon to build an ark when actually... You are building an ark in a generation that has never seen one. Oh Hallelujah. Amen. So, in other words, be prepared to do things that have never been done before. Oh Hallelujah. Yeah. If you over-rationalize things, you may lose a generation. Let me say that again. If, if you overthink God's instruction, you may lose a generation because some of the instructions will not make sense. Now, here's the thing, beloved, and I want to be clear on this. God is not encouraging us not to think. God is not encouraging us not to rationalize. But please have limitations to your rationalizing. Don't rationalize things that can only be spiritually descend where your mind is unfruitful. So that's what I'm about telling you. So now, you say to yourself, okay, I've never seen a flood. I've never seen any high tide. And I have no clue where this ark is going to float. But let me build it out of obedience. That's maturity. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you decide, I'm going to build this ark out of maturity, uh, out of obedience to God. That will save a generation. Because out of that obedience, Noah was able to save the remnant. I always ask myself, how many of us are overthinking God's instruction and there's a generation that's dying while we're thinking? You are still analyzing and the generation is being lost because of your over-analysis. Please say this with me. Let it be unto me as unto your word. Everybody must come to that point. Another example would be Deborah. I love Deborah because she's a woman. But when she saw that Israel was no longer ready to fight, they were no longer prepared to fight, all the enemies of Israel were doing as they pleased to the nation of Israel. Deborah says, I will stand up and I'll be counted. I will lead you to war. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. She had no military background. She, she was a woman. And back in those days, it was unthinkable for women to be in charge of the military. Yeah. But she was prepared to do the uncommon. Sure. Hallelujah. Yeah. And this is what she says later on in Judges chapter 5, verses 6 to 7. Uh, it says, in the days of Shankar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were abundant. Travelers took, travelers took long winding paths. Villagers were wiped out. Up until I, Deborah, arose as a mother in Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a genocide here, beloved. A nation, the whole of nation of Israel was about to be destroyed up until Deborah decided no more. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know how concerned are you about South Africa. Yeah. I don't know how concerned about you. I don't know how concerned you are about what's going on in our nation, you know. And I pray in Jesus' name that you don't get used to bad news. Amen. Amen. Don't get used to seeing a generation being wiped out. Sure. It's common. It's common that people are dying. It's common that people are spiritually deplorable. Sure. It's common. No, no, no. May not be so common that it no longer moves you. May you arise like Deborah and say, we will not stand for this nation wiping. Yes, yeah. A genocide is not normal. Hallelujah. Amen. And then may you arise in your generation and do the uncommon. Another uncommon undertaking was by Esther. Yeah. You might remember her, beloved. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Esther was called upon by her aunt Mordecai to step in into a situation where again there was a plot to totally destroy the nation of Israel. Now, there was a royal protocol. No one approaches the king unless the king summons you. 
And Esther was trembling again. How do I do this? And Mordecai sends a message to her. And then, she, this is what Mordecai says. Remember, if you don't do this, not only will Israel perish, you will also perish with them. In other words, Mordecai is reminding Esther that just because you are royalty now, it does not mean that you will be spared. Because right now, they are looking for biological Jews. Whether they are in palace or whether they are in prisons, they are looking for them. This is very important. And again, that's a message for all of us, beloved. Just because God has blessed you, don't forget people that are still struggling. Hallelujah. Don't forget your communities. Don't forget where you come from. Praise the name of Jesus. So that was a message from Mordecai. Don't forget that you are a Jew. When they come for us, ultimately they will come for you. And then this is what Esther says. I love what she says in Esther chapter 4, verse 16. The latter part says, I will go to the king even though it's against the law. Hallelujah. Wow. This is an uncommon undertaking. Yeah. Let me just remind you, during this time, if you approach the king without being summoned by the king, you'll be killed. Mm -hmm. sure. And then this is what she says, even though it's against the law, I will approach the king. And then I love this. If I perish, I perish. Yeah. Yeah. That's audacious faith again. Yeah. I am prepared to die just to save my generation. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. May, you, may, may, you, may you be like that, beloved. Hallelujah. Yeah. And remember that we are dead men walking already. Yeah. We've been crucified with Christ. Yeah. So if God calls us to do something that might even threaten our lives, let it be so. If I perish, I perish. As long as I perish in obedience. Hallelujah. I don't want to live longer in disobedience. I would rather live a short life of obedience. Praise God. Now, this is a call to our generation. You will be instructed by the Spirit of God to say things that will infuriate the ruling party. Let me remind you, child of God, that you are not called to be politically correct. We are called to speak the word of God. Whether politicians want to hear it, you must speak the word. Whether authorities don't like it, you must speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Yes. And I, I want to again reiterate this. You, you have the spirit of boldness. Hallelujah. We are not cowards. Hallelujah. Yes. We have been saved into, into the spirit of boldness, spirit of power. We have the spirit of power. And I pray that you dare say what God is instructing you to say without fear. The second thing that I see in these uncommon undertakings is the life of Abraham. Again, Abraham in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, the following verse, this is what it says, By faith, when he was called to a place that would later that he will later receive as, in, 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 as his inheritance, he obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. That's powerful. He did not know where he was going, but he went. Again, do you see this whole thing of over-rationalizing can really shall change you. Hallelujah. You don't have to have it all figured out. We are a generation that wants to figure things out before we commit. And this is a season in which you must listen to what the Spirit of the Lord is nudging you to do. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. That is why there is power in being led by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So Abraham had an impression. If you ask him, give me the details of your destination, he will not tell you. Mm. But he heard a word, come out of the people where you were born. Come out of your family members. Come out of your friends. And this is very important, beloved, because again, the instruction here is, as long as you are in the land of the Canadians, you will not multiply and you will not be fruitful. <laughs> Familiar surroundings for many of us are not a place of our fruitfulness. In other words, God has to take you out of your familiar surrounding and place you in a strange land where you will learn to trust Him and trust Him only. Sometimes God will actually take you out of powerful networks. People that can make things happen. 
Eh? People that can just say uh, and make a few phone calls and things happen for you. God will take you out of those people so that you learn to trust him and trust him only. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When God has accomplished his purpose through you, your uncle will not receive the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of us are very connected. You have uncles and you have, uh, you have aunties and you have powerful people. But God is saying, I'm going to remove all your networks. And I will take you to a place where you will multiply, where you will be fruitful out of my doing. Mm. Hallelujah. That is why, beloved, we are not even worried that we don't have political connections. Amen. The purposes of God through our lives will be accomplished whether we are connected or not connected. Praise God. Now, there is something that I have realized about fruitfulness as well, beloved. Fruitfulness actually requires some pressure, pressure. Have you ever noticed that a seed has to experience some form of natural pressure that will break it? And once it breaks, only then can it germinate. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah. There is no germination in a seed that can ever take place without the seed breaking. Yeah. There's pressure. There are, there, are, there are natural pressures. You may not even see it. In actual fact, I once saw an experiment where they used minute sound recorders that were capturing the process of germination of a seed. It was like thunder. While the seed was breaking so that it could germinate. And that is a pressure situation that will produce the fruit that God wants you to produce. You see this very clearly when you actually go to the book of Exodus. There is a powerful scripture uh, in Exodus chapter 1, maybe, uh, I don't know if anyone has a mic, uh, maybe you can read more partly. Exodus chapter 1 verse 7, uh, very interesting. Uh, you find the nation of Israel in Egypt, Egypt was a pressure place. They were like in a pressure pot of some sort. You know, a pressure cooker of some sort. And when they were pressured, you will think that they will be annihilated. But this is what the scripture says. But the Israelites were exceedingly fruitful. Hallelujah. They multiplied greatly, mm -hmm. increased in numbers, and became so numerous that the land was filled with them. These were people that were subjected to slavery. That's what I got. And you will assume that just by virtue of this slavery, maybe they will decrease in number. Yeah. But the Bible says they exceed. We are multiplied. Now, maybe to, to, to paint another picture, Mamun Pase, just read the same chapter, verse 12. And it says, But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied. Hallelujah. And spread. So that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites. The more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied. Hallelujah. Yeah. Please turn to your and say, the more they oppress you, the more you will multiply. In other words, when pressure is applied on you, God is not intending that you be destroyed. When pressure is applied on you, God is wanting you to release something. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, that, that, that is why sometimes we misunderstand our pressures. Let me probably put another way. Let me put this another way. If you avoid pressure, you will not multiply. If you avoid a place, beloved, where you will be subjected to an inconvenience and discomfort, you will not multiply. Because your multiplication requires that you be subjected to discomfort and inconvenience. Hallelujah. It's just like a student who refuses to study. There will be no miracle that will save you. You will not see any fruitfulness. I know some students are not liking me right now. You will not see any academic fruitfulness up until you study. In actual fact, when you pray, it does not exempt you from studying. Prayer does not exempt you from studying. Actually, you can come to a place where the more you pray, the more the Holy Spirit says to you, study. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
That is why even as Christian businessmen, we are not exonerated, beloved, from hard work. Yeah. You roll up your sleeve and you work hard. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why? Because for multiplication and fruitfulness to take place, there has to be pressure. Yeah. Pressure. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that you do not avoid pressure because you could be avoiding your multiplication. May you not avoid pressure because you could be avoiding your increase. The more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied. I love that. Which means you are unstoppable. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is nothing that can stop you. No politician can stop you. I've spoken to you about the law of buoyancy. You know, in the, the law of buoyancy in physics, the, the more you suppress something, if it can float, it will just spring back to the surface. You cannot suppress something that is meant to flow. Praise the name of Jesus. You can't drown it. And I pray that you be like that. The more they push against you, may you produce even more. Praise the name of Jesus. So there is an instruction, therefore, to leave familiar places. I don't know what familiar places you have been holding on to. Hallelujah. Don't hold on to familiar places. Don't insist on your comfort because you could be depriving yourself of increase. Here's another very unfamiliar situation. When Israel had to leave, maybe you can read this one, Mom in the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29. We see Israel leaving Egypt. And I want to talk about leaving Egypt because there are dynamics there which are very important for your forward movement. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea mm. as on dry land. Hallelujah. You can stop there. They passed from Egypt through the Red Sea and walked on dry land by faith. Now, many of us saw the Red Sea as the threat. That was the major threat. But I want us to understand, there was another threat beyond the Red Sea. Yeah. Do you know what that threat beyond the Red Sea was? The slave mentality. Yeah. Wow. The slave mentality. Because in Numbers chapter 11, Numbers chapter 11 verses 4 to 6, the Bible says there was a rebel among them. A riotous crowd. Yeah. A rowdy crowd. That began to say, mm, 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 we don't like this manner. We miss the onions of Egypt. Yeah. We were enslaved in Egypt, but at least they fed us well. Yeah. Now, I want to talk about leaving your slavery by faith. <laughs> because you see, let, please hear me, hear me. Some, there, there are forms of slavery that smell like, taste like, feel like freedom. Yeah. Because you see, these forms, these forms of slavery, these forms of slavery have benefits. Turn to your neighbor and say, there is a form of slavery that has benefits. Now that is why when God comes into your space and God wants to remove you from the place of slavery, benefits will speak. Benefits will speak. The pharaohs were very clever. The pharaohs overworked the Jews. But one thing they did well was to feed them. So that when it was time to leave Egypt, yeah. in the wilderness they remember that we worked hard but we were well fed. Yeah. Because not every slavery is without benefits. Uh, there, are, there are forms of slavery, beloved, so, that, that are so full of benefits you are actually you can actually deceive yourself into thinking that I'm free so, when you are a slave. Let, 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 me, let me just tell you that some of us are, are living in that slavery right now. Yeah. When, 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 when God says, come out of Babylon, yeah. <laughs> you are thinking of fringe benefits yeah. <laughs> that you will have to forego when you leave yeah. Babylon because you are venturing into the unknown. Yeah. And that, that is why it is so hard to leave Babylon. When God says leave Babylon, you think of all the benefits. You are this very same person that is complaining, hey, they're overworking me, they're doing this to me. That you, you, you have been cheated for stress and anxiety, you have been cheated for panic disorders, but you are going back there. Why? 
benefits are speaking to you. It's the very same thing. It's the very same thing that we as South Africans find ourselves in. Slavery with benefits. We don't like what the ruling party is doing. But it feels like freedom because these are guys we know. We grew up with these guys. If we vote differently, that's the devil we don't know. Maybe let us therefore settle with the corruption. Let us bear with all the poor saviors delivery. Let us bear with all of it. At least we know them. It smells like freedom. It feels like freedom. But it's not it. There is a, a powerful story of a man who found an eaglet. And he took this little eagle and kept it in the chicken coop. It grew with chickens. He held it by a small string that was tied to a pole. When the eagle grew bigger and bigger, and there was chaos in the chicken coop, he decided I will release it. He took it and traveled very far from his home and then he released the eagle into the wild. But before sunset, that eagle was back to the chicken coop. Why? The issue here was, I have free lunch here. In the wild I have to hunt for myself. So in other words, the cost of freedom is way too much. I would rather settle for slavery with benefits. Because in the wild I have to learn to survive. I've just discovered that in the wild there are territorial issues. There are places where I can hunt. But here, I get everything that the chickens are getting. Therefore, I settle for my slavery. And I pray in Jesus' name that you be not like that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are places that God is taking you to. They will be inconvenient. You will be thirsty along the way. But Egypt is not an option. Amen. Remember that the miracle to part the Red Sea is only meant for you to get to Canaan. But the Lord will not part the Red Sea for you to go back to Egypt. There is no such a miracle. So it is, it is for this reason, please get this, it is for this reason that once you have crossed over to the other side, you will not be helped to go back. Why? Because that is not an option as far as God's agenda is concerned. There, there, there's another painful story, you know, that, that, that is why I want you, please be careful, be careful. The, 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 the Red Sea is not your major, major threat. The major threat is your slave mentality. There's another painful story of girls that have been rescued from, from the Philippines. Um, the, 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 in the Philippines, there's this prevalent a practice of underage girls in the prostitution industry. I mean, you get 11-year-olds, 12-year-olds selling their bodies in the Philippines. And it's very interesting that there are agencies that rescue these girls. But what has been found is that two, three years time, the very same girls that were rescued at the age of 12, when they turn 14, they go back. And people have been asking, how come you are rescued from this prostitution, brutal prostitution industry, but somehow you voluntarily make your way back? You know what it is? It is slavery with benefits. There are bread and butter issues that these girls cannot answer. They have no solutions. And that is why they think to themselves, maybe prostitution is still a better option. I pray in Jesus' name that as you cross over, may you allow God to renew your mind. Renew your mind. Hallelujah. Be careful of the people that you are taking with you to destiny. Be careful, you know, I, I was reading about the rebel, the rebel that was craving the food of Egypt. Theologians tell us that this rebel consisted of people who were not exactly Jewish. 
Because you see, in Egypt, not only Jews were slaves. There were many other nations that were slaves in Egypt. Yeah. So when Moses said to the Jews, let us go. When the Jews left Egypt, there are many non-Jewish people that left with them. Yes. And this is the crowd that we find in Numbers. In Numbers chapter 11, they smell the food of Egypt. Why? Because destiny of the land of promise is not in their heart. They have no spiritual connection to the destiny of the Hebrew man. Because they are not Hebrew by nature. So here's the thing. Be careful who you take along your journey towards destiny. Says so that, 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 that is why you will have to be very strong. Even if nobody joins you, one, one of the things I'm beginning to appreciate in this season is to do things alone. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Obey God even if no one is clapping. Mm -hmm. Obey God even if no one is giving you oh words of affirmation. You obey God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. So you need to be very careful. Please don't take every Tom, Dick, and Harry along the journey. It is so important. Now, there's a scripture that I want you to read, Mama Pasele, Galatians chapter 4. We need to confront this slave mentality. Because many believers, you have been made royalty, but you still think like a slave. God has made you a powerful, holy nation, but you still think like a, a slave of Egypt. We need to deal with this issue, beloved. Because you cannot, let me, let me put this across to you, beloved. Slaves don't inherit anything. Sons do. Amen. 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 God will not give inheritance to slaves. That is why even if you are a son, if you think like a slave, you will wait for a while. And that could answer why some of us are experiencing delays. You are a born again child of God. You are royalty, but you still think like a slave. And more so for us black South Africans. In this day and age, none of us should be giving excuses like, hey, this is what the white man did. This is what, and I, that is why I can't move forward because the white man did this. And, you know, no, 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 no. Remember that you are not just a black man, you are a child of God. That should count for something. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. That should come for something that I'm a child of God. I am spirit filled and I am not subject to the elemental spiritual forces. Let's read it. Uh, it's, it's, this is important. Galatians chapter 4. And, and, and uh, maybe take us from this one. I'll stop you. What I am saying is that as long as an heir is under age, he is no different from a slave. Aha. Uh -huh. Although he owns the whole estate. Now that is that is shocking to me. Sure. You own so much, but you will have none of it. Why? Because you are immature. Sure. Immature. And I want you to understand that God is very responsible. Yeah. He is not going to give you your estate up until you grow up. Maybe it is appropriate at this point to touch your neighbor and say, Grow up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please read on one path. The heir is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. Yeah. So also, when we were under age, mm -hmm. we were in slavery under the elemental spiritual forces of the world. Now you, you need to understand, these are man-made rules. Yeah. These elemental spiritual forces, this is what we are subject to. Man-made philosophies. Man-made ideologies, that's all we know, and this is the realm where we operate. There is nothing bigger than what man says. But mature sons, they will go beyond ideologies of men. They want to know what is God saying. Why? Because Romans 8, chapter 14, as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are sons of God. Hallelujah. That is why we are not led by philosophies of this world. That's why the world does not understand us. Yeah. Praise God. We will end the decrees they have. Yeah. We will study what they study. That's, beloved, that nothing impresses me like a PhD yeah. who still is not bound by elemental spiritual forces. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. Very important. Don't be bound by elemental spiritual forces. These are philosophies that we that we get when we go to universities. Institutions of learning. Hallelujah. Yeah. Get your PhD, but think like a son of God. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Think like a son of God. That is powerful to me because guess what, beloved? The professors of our time have no answers to what's going yeah. on right now. In actual fact, I will not be surprised if God provides solutions to our problems through the uneducated, spirit-filled people. God says, where is the philosopher of this time? And then Paul says, God has confounded the wise. Hallelujah. And he uses, he uses foolish things of this world in order to confuse the wisdom of this age. Hallelujah. We are, we are those foolish things. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why you don't have to have a PhD to provide a solution. Yeah. Divine solution. Just have to be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 Turn to your neighbor. I'm not subject to, subject to the philosophies of this world. Be led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Complete complete the passage, ma'am. But when the set time had fully come, mm. God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, mm -hmm. to redeem those under the law. Yeah. That we might receive adoption to sonship. I love that. Hallelujah. Amen. We receive adoption to sonship because we are not supposed to be governed by the laws of this world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. May the law of Christ be revealed to you. So that you move and breathe the law of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So, it will appear that the 400 years of slavery in Egypt was meant to mature them. In other words, if God had sent a Moses a hundred years earlier or two hundred years earlier, he would have found immature people. What's shocking about them is that even after 400 years, you still see vestiges of immaturity in the desert. That is why when the assessment was done, there was an immaturity assessment that was done. Only Joshua and Caleb was found, were found to be mature. Can you imagine 400 years of growing a nation? But the final analysis says, only Joshua and Kelly are fit to go into the land of promise. My prayer is that may you be amenable to the processes of heaven that are meant to mature you. Because there is a lot that you are missing out because of your immaturity. Hallelujah. There is a lot you are missing out on. And you need to grow and grow fast, beloved. Because there is more land to take over. Praise God. There is more that we need to accomplish for the kingdom. But your immaturity is standing on the way. Sometimes I look at the petty issues that we fight over. And then I see people who are not ready for the land of promise. Every time you hear petty issues, believers fight over. So and so said this. And so and so said that. And then I stop coming to church. And I think to myself, you are not ready. You are not ready for the land of promise. So is what I you cannot find yourself not coming to church just because you don't like it there. Just, just, because, just because there are songs that you don't like and you're missing out on the broader kingdom purpose that God has made you for. You are fighting over small little things. You know, that's why sometimes I really love my simplicity. I really don't care whether that flower is facing that way or is facing this way. As long as I'm moving forward in God's purposes, I, I, I'll, leave, I'll leave that to some other. I'll leave that to others. Hallelujah. But I, I, I just want to do God's will. Flowers will be sorted along the way. <laughs> Hallelujah. You'll be amazed with Abbas Adwani. By Allah. And, and, and here's this thing. Please don't be a softie. Don't be a softie. Don't be a softie. 
Because the land of promise requires people who are going to be strong. Men and women who are not going to be complaining about all petty issues. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey, I just want to be cozy. I'm not going to church today. Well, we're still going to fight the Canaanites. <laughs> When it gets cold, you can't come to the prayer meeting. And, 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 no, you're not ready. You're not ready. You're not ready. When you are telling us what you are going to be fighting principalities, powers, when you intimidate what you weather in winter. No, 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 no. You are not. You better toughen up, man. Toughen up. Praise the name of Jesus. Sometimes, sometimes they will pull us back on push and the season. The COVID is Oshana. Praise the yeah, name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh we are burning through the coals right here in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And don't tell me we're irresponsible. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. We are fighting in the spirit. We are fighting in Jesus' money. And Lord is at stake. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't be a soft team. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Here's another thing, beloved. It will appear. In this passage of Galatians chapter 4, that immaturity is equal to slavery. Immaturity equates to slavery. It is as simple as that. So that is why many of us are sitting here thinking, but this thing is an issue about me. I'm royalty. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the fields. Food is why you tell us every time when we close the service, we are blessed in the city. But I'm seeing none of these blessings. No, no, no. You have some growing up to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. We have some growing up to do, beloved. Yeah. And we need to grow up. And I pray in Jesus' mighty name that your 400 years be reduced. Why? Because you are growing in an accelerated manner. May you experience acceleration in your maturation process. Praise God. Hallelujah. Because you must possess the land before Jesus comes back. Yeah. I hope you understand that. Yeah. Possess everything that you must possess before the coming of the Lord. Yeah. Your resourcefulness is not needed in heaven. We need it right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The, the, the issue of poverty must be dealt with right now. Yeah. So the world needs you blessed. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. The world needs you in a strong position financially. The world needs you to walk in breakthrough so that you can be a blessing. Says one of the Hallelujah. Amen. So you need to mature. You need to mature. So now here's the thing. When when, when you also need to be very careful of uh, uh, you see when you are moving from Egypt to the land of promise, there are stations along the way, refreshment stations, and uh, be careful of some of those stations. Some of them are very powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of them will refresh you so much you will think you have arrived mm -hmm. in your land of promise. Mm -hmm. When it's actually just a station. Mm -hmm. It's almost like when you drive from Deben to Johannesburg. Yeah. Remember Montrose? <laughs> when, when, you get to, when, when, you, when you get to Montrose, <laughs> there is, there is Debonese there, there is Wimpy there, yes. there is everything there. There is Mug and Bean yeah. and you think to yourself, my word. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stop right here. Yeah. Why go to Job? <laughs> no, no, no. Be careful of refreshment stations that are so comfortable you don't want to move further to your destiny. There, there, there's a powerful story about Moses in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, if you read verses 24 to 26, the Bible says, even though he was called Pharaoh's daughter, but he refused that identity. He chose to suffer with the children of God than to enjoy fleeting pleasures of Egypt. He counted a blessing, the suffering with the children of God, than to be called Pharaoh's son. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now here's the thing. Moses needed to be clear about identity. And Moses needed to be very clear that, listen, even if there are fringe benefits here in Egypt, 
But nothing can ever compare to the land of promise that God is taking us to. Amen. That had to be very clear, Mr. Yeah. Lord. There is no refreshing station, Mr. Lord. No matter how convenient, no matter how comfortable you find it, that will ever compare to the place that God is taking oh you to. Yes, what I got. Be careful of those details, therefore. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And then turn to your neighbor and say, keep on walking. Yeah. Keep on walking. You have to get to the place that God is calling you to. Yeah. Let me just say, end with this example of unconventional warfare strategy. Unconventional warfare strategy. And let's read Mampathe, the Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30. This is, this is another very uncommon undertaking that we have to embrace by faith, especially in these last days. An unconventional warfare strategy. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell mm. after the army had marched around them for seven days. Hallelujah. By faith. The walls of Jericho fell. And all they had to do was to march around for seven days. Notice they were marching around in faith. That's what I'm saying. You don't march going through motions. You, you march by faith. Hallelujah. That is why even when you walk, walk in faith. Walk in faith. Praise the name of Jesus. You know, in the farming project we're doing it in Duba, when we walk around with the Bible, even when we are measuring land, we speak things. We speak and say, Father, in Jesus' name, whatever we put into the soil. As you, as, as you run with that wheel, measuring the land, in the name of Jesus, Father, we are declaring fertility here. In Jesus' mighty name, everything we put into the ground will thrive. In the name of Jesus, don't walk aimlessly. Amen. Amen. Walk by faith. <coughs> Hallelujah. Even when you meet someone and you know that they have issues and you are in conversation with someone with huge issues, be in prayer in your heart as you are trusting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is why sometimes you can think we are having a conversation with you. We are talking to you in the natural, but in the spirit we are praying for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You look at this man and say, Father, change this man. And I'm saying something else to you with my mouth, but in my heart I'm saying, change this man. Change this man in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We need to walk by faith. So they marched around for seven days around the walls of Jericho by faith. Now that is very uncommon because they were blowing trumpets and, 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 and all of that. And in actual fact, when you watch them, you will think that this was a brass band marching around. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about worship. As our office strategy. It is so important that you appreciate that. There is, uh, uh, let, let me just share my story. When, when I was a, 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 a young believer, one of the things that really intimidated me was to attend among intercessions. You, you know those warfare prayers. You walk into the room, people are up and down. We bind this in Jesus' name. We bind that in the name of Jesus. Satan will take authority over you. And, and, and then you think, oh my son. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Here you are, you feel like saying, Lord, I love you. Lord, I, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I honor you. And you feel like you are inappropriate. Mm. I've discovered that worship is also a weapon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that is why here, this is this is where you, you find this beloved. Maybe we can read this Mam Second Chronicles chapter twenty verses twenty one to twenty two. Second Chronicles chapter twenty verses twenty one to twenty two. I want you to appreciate the post of worship, especially in these last days. It says, after consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord. Listen to that. Men to sing to the Lord and to praise Him for the splendor of His holiness as they went out at the head of the army. They are leading the army of Israel against the Ammonites and the Moabites. And they are saying, Father, you are worthy of praise. You are holy. You are to be glorified. Hallelujah. And they, the Bible says they were saying, Give thanks to the Lord for His love and yours forever. That does not sound like a warfare strategy to me. But in the heavenlies, this is a warfare strategy. Now, as they continued singing like this, the Bible says, 
as they began to sing and praise God, the Lord set ambushes, not oh one ambush, ambushes against the men of Ammon and the men of Moab who were invading Judah and they were defeated. Don't think that by worshipping God, you are not engaging in warfare. In actual fact, God is not looking for so-called intercessors. Do you know who God is looking for? Worshippers. Worshippers. John chapter 4, verse 23. The Bible says, They that worship God shall worship Him in spirit and in truth. Why? Because this is the kind that the Father is seeking after. In actual fact, any intercessor who is not a worshipper is not waging war in the spirit. Accurately. Bless the Lord. His love endures forever. Bless the name of Jesus. His love endures forever. You will think that is a docile statement. But it is power packed in the spirit. Just by saying, bless the Lord. His love endures forever. Bless the Lord. His love endures forever. We give thanks to the Lord. All of a sudden, the devils are set to flight. And you wonder why. Because a worshiper has just shown up. Praise the Lord of Jesus. Maybe you should turn to him and say, give honor and glory to God. That is part of our warfare in these last days. Even if you don't probably make sense of situations around you, worship God. Don't stop worshiping God. Don't stop praising God. Don't wait for situations to make sense before you praise Him. Praise is a weapon. Hallelujah. Worship is part of warfare. Let me just conclude by qualities of people who will embrace uncommon instructions in this hour so that they see uncommon results. There is a very interesting conversation between Jesus and his disciples. In Luke chapter 17, Jesus is talking about the subject of forgiveness. And he says, forgive them 70 times. Seven. And keep on forgiving them. When they sin against you, forgive them. And then the disciples say, hey, this is too much. Because these fellows were the kind that will easily sort you out. You know, they, they, they quickly sorted you out if you, if you were out of line. And then when you talk about issues of forgiveness to them, Tina say fear and not say fear that Tina not Hey, this forgiveness thing, it was so serious to them. They even said, Lord, please increase our faith. Tina's Lord, increase our faith. And then Jesus says to them. If you have faith as small as a, as a mustard seed, Amen. you will say to this mountain, be moved into the heart of the sea, and it will be moved. Sure. What does Jesus say? Jesus is saying your issue is not the magnitude of your faith. Amen. There are other issues. <laughs> Sometimes, Bazana, it's not about how big your faith is. Sometimes it's about your character. Sometimes it's about your attitude. There are people who have the right faith but wrong attitude. Wrong attitude. And I've met them. What he has the moon. That is why sometimes you can see people performing miracles. But the moment they are done with those miracles, all of a sudden you step on their toes, they will, they, they will make a mess out of you. And you realize, oh my word, we are big on faith, but we have a short fuse. And all the faith works is destroyed by their short fuse. Yeah. So that is why when you are building a believer, you don't just build their faith, but you build their character as well. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because believe me, if your character is not built, you can undo wonderful works yeah. that you have done by your faith. Yeah. Can we imagine casting out devils and raising people from wheelchairs and all of a sudden, just one, one wrong move that someone makes, you blow up. Yeah. Yeah. And people ask, was this the same guy that was laying hands? No. So this is what we need to deal with. Now, I want to talk about this, these issues of attitude and character. Here's the thing about people who are able to exercise uncommon faith and for uncommon situations. One, they obey God even if there is no prototype of the instruction that they are called to obey. They have no reference. I want you to have an ability to obey God without a reference. Even if you don't have an index example. 
obey God. So I'm not trying to get away. You, you, God, believe me, I'm prophesying over some of you here. God is going to call you to step into terrains where nobody has been. Hallelujah. Even if you don't have an example that you can recall. If God says, go to that place, you go there. You obey Him in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. This is important because why? We understand Isaiah chapter 40 verse 19. God is always doing a new thing. Hallelujah. God is always doing a new thing. And here's another thing. Are you aware that there are things that have not yet manifested? Because the Bible says, no mind has conceived. No ear has seen. No, 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 no ear has heard. No eye has seen what the Lord has prepared for those that love him. Oh, shit, there are things we have never seen as a Lord. But they are about to spring forth. Now, if you say, if you keep on insisting, but we don't have a reference for this. You're in trouble. We need to just keep on descending, descending. Hallelujah. So, before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to see miracles that we have never seen. Why? Because the glory of the latter house will be greater than that of the former house. I do believe that in this end time revival that we are anticipating, beloved, we are going to see miracles that even the apostles never saw. Hallelujah. Believe that. Believe that. I believe that. I'm, I'm banning for that. I'm begging for that. Praise the name of Jesus. If, if 3,000 people were saved on the day of Pentecost, I'm saying, Father, save a million in one day. Save a million in one day. Praise the name of Jesus. Believe that even if you have no reference, has a million ever been saved in one day? They shall be saved when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon us. Hallelujah. They will be saved in the name of, right here in Devon. Hallelujah. Praise God. I once had a dream, beloved, of a revival that was going on over the stadium in KZN. There was stadium in KZN from the south coast to the north coast. There was a revival. I saw people coming back from work, leaving their bags in their homes, going back to a revival meeting, and people were on fire for God. The Spirit of the Lord was being poured out. People could not go home. Hallelujah. Do we have a reference for it? We might not have a reference for, for it, but we're saying, Father, we are ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young people will see visions. Old people will dream dreams. It will happen in your generation. May you capacitate yourself. Sometimes I feel that there is so much that God wants to do, but we are the limiting factor. Hallelujah. Be prepared to go where we've never been. Second thing is, these men and women don't follow popular trends. They follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. They don't make mock decisions. They make decisions alone as long as they're guided by the Holy Spirit. They don't flow with the crowds, but they flow with the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Isaiah 30 verse 21, you shall hear a voice from behind your ear saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whether you go right or you go left, the Spirit of the Lord says, this is the way, walk in it. And I pray that you may hear his voice. They don't allow sentiments and emotions to stand in the way of obedience. Are you aware that it's not a small thing when the Spirit of the Lord says, leave your parents. Go to a place I will show you. Leave your friends. That is not a small thing. Because we all prefer to be comfortable. But I pray in Jesus' name that you be prepared to do that. Don't be more sentimental than you are spiritual. Be prepared to detach from things. There's something that Bob Taylor said when he was ministering. That even if you are building a nice home, be prepared to sell it. When God says move on. How many of you are prepared for those things? And many of us, many of us are attached to our properties. And that is why Abraham was very clever. And we, may we have the wisdom of Abraham. You know what Abraham did? Abraham, the Bible says Abraham decided to build tents. He would put up tents instead of building mansions. Why? He understood that God was always on the move. Yes. When you hold on to material things, hold on to them loosely, yes. not tightly. 
your cars, your houses, yeah. your money. Mm -hmm. Don't be like Lord's wife. Mm -hmm. When God says move, you keep on looking back. Ah, yeah. And then you end up not fulfilling the plan of the Father because you are too married to your things. Mm -hmm. There must be nothing under the sun that will stop you from going to a place that God is calling you to go to. Nothing. Your cars, your houses, your bank balance, nothing should stop you. If any of the things I've mentioned can stop you, there is some homework to do. Says I will tell you. The reason why I'm speaking like this, I don't know where God is going to say go to. And I believe that some of the places that he's going to tell you to go to are not places you prefer. But we do trust that he who has promised is faithful to perform. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Here's another thing about people who are willing to embrace uncommon instructions for uncommon results. They embrace isolation and loneliness as part of the journey of obedience. Okay. Hallelujah. Yes. Let me tell you. Let me a crowd. You love being in a crowd. Please deal with that thing. Please, I'm, I'm not promoting a situation where you have this antisocial personality thing, you know. No, 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 no. Don't be antisocial. Love people. Mingle with people. But you must hear God when he says, I'm now isolating you. And I've realized that a lot of people that are mightily, mightily used by God, every now and then they get isolated. They get isolated. You can talk about Moses, 40 days in the mountain. His, his closest aid, Joshua, was not there. It was just him and God. Elijah, 40 days. Elisha was not there. The company of the prophets were not there. It was just him and God. Jesus, 40 days and 40 nights. Nobody was there. Not even John. Not even John. It was just him and God. Now embrace that. Embrace that. Don't even, don't even try to bring your Facebook along with you to a place of isolation. Yes? Don't, don't bring any social media platform because when God wants your attention, you better make sure that Instagram and Facebook is not there. Hallelujah. Why? Because Pastor without social media interference. And I would encourage you, if there are accounts, social media accounts that you need to close, just for the sake of getting ready for what God is wanting to do, close those accounts. Amen. 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 Close those accounts. Hallelujah. Here's another one. Embrace your uniqueness and your peculiarity. Amen. You are peculiar. You are unique. Amen. Don't apologize for that. Amen. Don't apologize. You are a chosen nation. You are a peculiar people. That's how you are. That is why many times you are not going to fit in. Yeah. You're not going to, many times we fight too hard just to fit in. Yeah. You are unique. Then, I've said this to you before. According to Romans chapter 12. And if you read verse 2, do not conform any longer to the standards of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewal of the mind. Amen? Here's another thing. You cannot bring transformation to a place where you have conformed. <laughs> if you plant into a place, once you have planted into a place, believe me, forget about transformation. Because the, the whole thing has assimilated you. You've been absorbed by the system and you cannot transform. You cannot transform anything when the whole thing has swallowed you up. So it's very important that you appreciate your uniqueness. They will label you. They will call you strange. You are weird. You act funny. Why do you play all the time? You and your Bible studies. Just loosen up a bit. I've told you that there are people who don't like you as long as you're prayerful. Sure. They prefer you in your prayerless state. Oh, don't play to the gallery. Sure. You are unique. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We, we are building revivalists. Yes. We are building men and women who are going to be familiar with mountaintop experiences with God when no crowds are there. 
As a pastor, let me tell you something. As a pastor, I used to be offended when I call a prayer meeting and nobody shows up. Recently, I've learned to appreciate, hey, not everyone is cut up for this. And therefore, I'm observing soldiers that God is molding. Soldiers that God is shaping up. And I've come to realize that, no, 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 not, it's not the majority that will get to the top of the mountain. It's not the majority. But my prayer is that may as many as possible, as many as possible get to the top of the mountain so that we do kingdom business and do it speedily. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Here's, the, here's another one. This is the last one. These men and women understand that future prospects hold more weight than the suffering and the inconvenience they experience in their present day situation. What God has promised about the future is more powerful than the inconvenience and the discomfort they are going through. This is, this is Romans 8 verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Hallelujah. So we can bear with a few inconveniences. We can bear with coming to prayer meetings during winter. We can bear with those things. Hallelujah. We can bear with being rained upon when we do social welfare projects, when we are reaching out to the community. Hallelujah. So what I'm not gonna be the type of a believer. No. Unfortunately, COVID has, has spoiled some of us. You, 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 you were doing this online church. Also, as online, it was a spoiling the water. No, 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 no. I was going to challenge you. Who calls? I'm going to vey. Calls. I'm going to vey. But I'm going to spoil the pen. I was going to say some calls. I was going to say some kulea. I was going to show my head is banging. My long time ago. Praise God. They embrace inconvenience because they know that the glory that will be revealed in us far surpasses our inconveniences. And then here's what I love. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses sixteen to eighteen. It says, "Therefore, we do not lose heart." Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory. Umbozobuti, what troubles are you going through? What troubles can you say they are achieving for you eternal glories? Remember, no trouble, no glory. That is why we don't insist on the convenience of our journey. We, we don't insist that things be convenient. No, 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 no. Because our troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs all the troubles we're going through. Ah, so this is what we do. We fix our eyes on what is not seen. Mm. Not on what is seen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Hallelujah. Take to your feet. Hallelujah. Father, we bless your wonderful name. And we glorify you. Lord, I pray that you may raise cadres of the kingdom. May you raise soldiers in these last days. May you raise men and women who are going to be strong and mighty in the land. Raise men and women who are not afraid. Raise men and women who are not going to be complaining and murmuring about civilian affairs. Raise men and women whose eyes are fixed on things which are eternal. Things which are unseen. And I pray, Father, that the mind that was in Christ Jesus be also in us. I ask in Jesus' mighty name that we may bear through troubles and suffering. Because these troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory. One day we will hear you say, well done, my faithful servant. 
and we will ask you, Lord, why do you say, well done, my faithful servant? And you will say to us, for those prayer meetings you went to, for those souls you ministered to, for that witnessing you did to that sinner, well done, my faithful servant, for clothing that naked person. Well done, for my, my faithful servant, for sharing your resources with them. Lord, help us to just go out of our way and help us not to insist on comfort. The reality is that many of us are way too comfortable. Help us, oh God, help us in Jesus' holy name. We desire to serve you, we desire to honor you. In the name of Jesus, be exalted through us. And I pray that each and every one of us may reach our God-given destiny. May we realize our purposes, that which you made us for. May that be our reality in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. With our eyes closed, if there's something